the oh <coughs> sorry we will start with our last uh, last uh, talk or it's more discussion round for today even uh, some people are already uh, at dinner or something <laughs> but in the stream the, the hall is crowded and the people are cheering so our discussion round is about critical infrastructure and how you could save them and how to protect them so we've seen uh, the talk of FIF in, uh, in German and then uh, with Stefan about uh, manipulating the crews and it's, I think uh, all three here are, uh, yeah, it's like your day job uh, working with critical infrastructure, with talking about it and to know how important it is and uh, how to protect it. So uh, because you talked so much in the last hour, we will start here. <coughs> so why why do we talk about critical infrastructure and what is it and why do we have to protect it? So you said you're a system administrator, right? No, no. IT security, IT security consultant, security sorry, it's, uh, yeah, but it's close. I, I mean, it's <laughs> both sides of uh, the same system somehow. Um, so uh, in your job, what are the, the things which need most protection and are the weakest point in the infrastructure? What do you think? What's like the common big mistake in every infrastructure you see? Um, the, the main problem always, not, not just in, in our company I'm working for, is uh, <laughs> you, have, you have time pressure, you have cost pressure, of course, on things, and you have complexity. <coughs> and uh, the bigger companies get, uh, uh, the more complexity you get in things, and complexity is one of, of the worst enemies of uh, security. Because if you don't understand what you're doing, if you don't really have anything under control, or knowing what, what you really have somewhere, then uh, you're already lost because you can, can't secure that. Okay, so uh, your subject was cyber peace. And of course, it's about uh, critical infrastructure. Um, what, what is exactly the thing? Why do we need peace in a critical infrastructure? While usually critical infrastructure in our non-cyber world means that you have a lot of soldiers around it or a lot of police or something like that. How do you think, uh, can you protect something while you try to keep peace? Good question. Peace is, is a concept. Yes. And you don't think on war, you think on peace and try to protect your system in a manner that um, nobody is able to attack it. So like uh, just make a big protection around it that you have a defense, but you don't need to act actively uh, yeah, yeah, react on somebody. Yes. Like, like being in a bunker and uh, just waiting for the shells. Um, Is it about, yeah. about it? Yeah, it, it's a bit... Uh, IT defense means really uh, being, being on alarm, being on alarm, yeah? Looking at things, uh, looking on events and reacting quick. But that doesn't mean that you shoot the other aggressor or <laughs> shoot the attacker, but, but really just block him or mm -hmm. don't let him in or fix your problems. So... It, it would be very good if, if the companies or whatever uh, just just patch and do upgrades on their systems so early enough. That would help so much already. So doing full disclosure and then applying patches, basically. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, peace is really a concept because uh, I guess human was not born to be peaceful. He was born to fight, to survive in a certain way, and this is a big change and, uh, to, 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 to achieve. I mean, then we need to change the way human is working and uh, even in the way he's having a job. Today we have to fight for a job, we have to fight to be the best, you know, to show, to, to be a lot of exhibition on uh, our skills and whatever, we have to compete, you know, all these things like a fight somewhere. It's not really peaceful. So, I mean, I like the idea, and uh, we should tend to that reach that idea of, and to, to be together on that idea of to be peaceful and, and so on. And uh, about the problem of infrastructure and security, it's like we always have taken in a wrong side, not, I said we, not the people here, but uh, look at the media. They cannot make the difference between cyber criminals, cyber mercenaries, you know, and hackers. 
Today, we criminalize hackers because they can show a problem in a system. We do not recognize they are useful for that. I, I think in Germany, sometimes it's a little bit different because I, as far as I guess, I understand, sometimes the government can work with a body like a Chaos Computer Club, but not always. And Chaos Computer Club can show, demonstrate, sometimes technology can be uh, challenge, you know, and have to be reconsidered, like a biometric technology and so on, biometric passport and so on. But they have to show first. But uh, we, we, we are in a society where in, the most, of, uh, in the, most of the country, this is something you are guilty of, you know. You are going to go maybe in jail of, or you are going to be criticized because you find this security vulnerability and maybe you show it to uh, the public. After, of course, the ethical way will be to inform the company, and after a certain while, the company do not react, maybe to try to find another uh, understanding for a wider uh, people. So that means there is first a change of position uh, to the people who involve time you know, and energy to find you know, uh, vulnerability, to accept as well that human is making is having failure, we can find those failures in the code is producing, you know, in a way. So uh, we have to accept that situation, but uh, we, are not, we are not accepting it because we force people to accept, to sign up on software, they cannot do it in any way else, huh? like uh, it could be uh, Microsoft, it could be uh, Apple, it could be any of those. You have to accept by default, legally, they are not working. Each time they make a release, that release make a patch on problem which were present, you know, before. And when maybe were used by uh, unethical people and sell on the gray market as a vulnerability and so on. So, I mean, there is a big change of society, first by the understanding of the people and by the way we can treat those companies who provide most of the software used by 99% of the people on the earth today. So when it's about uh, keeping the system safe and or yeah, uh, making all these problems uh, public, what do you think who should be in charge of doing that? Is it like a club that like the Chaos Computer Club or is it like a bunch of people like Anonymous or should it be a ministry or private owned companies or all of them a bit or just everybody who sees it? Do you think uh, should it be like like the law and the ministry and uh, public employed people who we can trust, more or less? Or should it be just every hacker around um, and we will just have to decide uh, what's important or not? So who, sh who should be in charge of doing the job? I think first of all, it is the company itself who has to protect his system, their systems. And we need a law. Now we had lost um, a lot of time nearly 18 years for uh, IT Sicherheitsgesetz, um, which, um, yeah, reglement, reglement, yeah. reglement um, like the Datenschutzgesetz, yeah. uh, Data Protection, Data Act, Protection yeah. Law, yeah. Um, that the companies are yeah, obligated to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but <clears throat> as I see it, it's uh, somehow a lame duck. They, they had a good idea of doing this law, and then, the, yeah, then they said, but what do you think? Uh, how should we do the law? And it got smaller and smaller and smaller from my point of view. Is it right that it's, yeah, that it's just not the thing they, uh, it should be? Because it's, I think it's not helping that much. I mean, <coughs> there, there is a, today, the, the problem is like, uh, company is difficult for a company to hire uh, a security uh, specialist because the human resource cannot even identify what they need, and uh, in a lot of time they are not able to understand whatever about the ones they are going to hire. They look at the you know acronym of whatever you know security uh, exam they pass, but those security exam was from the past, <laughs> and uh, we have to consider today. Uh, you, I, I am talking under your control, but uh, maybe the time of a security specialist, uh, he have to spend like 40 uh, to 50 percent of his time to stay up to date, you know, to improve itself in terms of knowledge, to 
uh, in the company do not give that time to the one who are in charge of security, those ones are going to lose knowledge and then to not be able to really ensure the security of the company. And on another side, uh, those companies today are under a certain number of obligations on the legal side, like on accounting, on the, you know, um, I said uh, board uh, people, you know, on administration and whatever, but they have almost no obligation on the level of security they might have and they might uh, assess by auditing. Even the one who audit sometimes are not so much responsible to what they cannot detect or what they cannot uh, provide to the company. We had a bank in Switzerland recently who got uh, blackmailed by uh, this hacker, whatever, I don't like hackers' term for that, but cyber criminal movement. And uh, they didn't pay, and then uh, several files were published on the internet with uh, customer names, you know, a lot of information. The bank considered not as sensitive, but <laughs> which are quite sensitive. But who is responsible? The bank, of course, but the one who, who makes the, made the audit of the bank, you know, uh, before. What, what is the responsibility? This is an question, open question. I think one, one problem we face here is uh, the, the speed of, of the development of technology. So this uh, links to your thing of knowledge of people coping with it, and it links to adjusting laws and, and regulations to it. So when you look back when, when the German privacy law was, was invented, uh, there was no internet at that time. Yeah? There was just some mainframes and some, some central data centers somewhere, and there, there were some, some very good ideas for, for solving these concepts and the risk behind it. But uh, yeah, time and technology have changed a bit since then, and uh, the law was not in, on the same speed level. And so the same is with knowledge of people. Yeah? Things are moving so fast that uh, you have uh, trouble to get education over the people. Yeah, that's something you mentioned in your talk also. And uh, the challenge is really to, to be uh, on that line. And uh, I mentioned already complexity. Maybe you can make some strategic decisions not to have every fancy new stuff on your, on your, in your company. Maybe you, you get the chance to, to let products be uh, well matured enough to really use them and not, not using the alpha version of, of something that is, was just hacked together in two weeks on the weekend or something like that. So. But when you do that, you are depending <coughs> of the one who provides you this product you are using. And if that, that one, uh, whatever it is today, it could be Microsoft or Oracle, whatever, uh, are not doing the right assessment, which is the case in most, of, most, of the, most of the time, some people can... Uh, identify vulnerability, they c will resell on the gray market. Some others are going to make exploit for that vulnerability and to go into uh, the data of the company. And uh, I mean, it won't solve the problem to not forcibly uh, use the last version. And in another end, you are in kind of in a stage of those provider of software because the last version always includes the patch of the previous <laughs> version. <laughs> and then <laughs> you cannot patch the last one without to install the update of the, you know, pretendy new one. I mean, if we don't have a shared responsibility on what's happened to uh, vulnerability, not only the company which are using the software, but the one who are making the software as well. And today, there is a time to market. The time to market is used by the company to uh, give priority to marketing uh, compared to security. They count on this underground community of security people who are going to find vulnerability when the software is released. There is always like first brand new software. It could be from Apple, it could be from Microsoft, it could be from Google, whatever, you know. And then uh, after one, Weeks to weeks. Oh, well, this is a fix with this is a fix with lot which is going to patch lot of vulnerability. But this is might be the responsibility of the company to not provide a software which have already so much hole and bug, you know. 
And this is the things we need to change. We have to have the shared responsibility between company and between software maker. Because today uh, it's not the case. They are totally, uh, you know, uh, safe from any legal uh, problems they can face because of the vulnerability in the software. Yes. Well, years ago I was working with uh, Linear Accelerators, which is a pretty critical infrastructure, I think. And the people who uh, had to use it had basically no clue of IT. They exactly know what they want to do, how they want to uh, yeah, shoot the thing but they have no clue of uh, data security and they used for important measure points like 20 meter long USB cables. And if you tell someone from the IT, you know that it's insane to use 20 meter long unshielded uh, USB cables along on a 40 mega electron volt linear accelerator. But they didn't know. So uh, what they did was that everything was certified and they knew they had to use a certain software version, certain cables, everything. The problem was uh, that the certification was for a pretty old Windows system and they were not even allowed to install uh, service packs. Uh, and when we were allowed to update the system, uh, there were no updates available anymore because they ran out of service. So um, the problem there was even a simple USB stick or a diskette was a, a disk was a really, really big threat to the whole system because you have to find a way to make a system secure for people who have no clue of it. And they thought certification is a way, but in this case it wasn't. So do you think there is like the simple way of uh, yeah, making critical infrastructure safe for dummies, or uh, do you just have to teach the people a lot? I think both. Okay. You have to <laughs> teach the people, and you have to save the systems. But the problem is with Microsoft and Apple and so on, you have closed source software and closed source software is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so bullshit and million of code lines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have to use um, open system and you have to yeah, audit that systems many, many times. <laughs> but uh, you have to open, use open system, but not have a blind trust in, in it no, because we no. have you have to audit it, you have to test it, and yeah. Because a big, big failure of the last time was on open system, yeah. like uh, on um, uh, Shellshock, like uh, uh, on SSL, you know, like uh, EarthBliss and so on. So uh, I mean, this is uh, the the. the part of the solution, but we have to have a process we can make that, aud that audit to be more efficient yeah. on the long term and not to respose on voluntary people who are going to give energy and time. Is uh, all the problem like with TrueCrypt or this kind of uh, software today. And uh, because we respose sometimes on two, three, four people for something which is used by thousands, you know? <laughs> and people are not teach how to react to that, sometimes how to give money to those people, sometimes by donation, you know, mm -hmm. or this kind of things. It looks like sometimes stupid, but I'm using uh, something, I'm using Tor sometimes, so sometimes I'm, using, I'm giving a little, some dollars, you know, to Tor, <laughs> because may, it's nothing at the, my level, but uh, maybe if several people can do that, sometimes it can help those programs to re-exist in an efficient way, not based only on people giving their spare time to uh, make it to be developed. And on the other side, we have all this information we are not protected because you were mentioning some part of it, but uh, look, if we look at the fiber optical, you know, uh, all those fiber optical are on the underground, you know, and uh, the information is not protected, at, not protected <laughs> at all. And equipment exists to uh, snoop on fiber optical without to cut it, without to damage it today. I mean, but those data are not protected, and the amount of data which have all value passing through an optical fiber today is like huge compared to 10 years ago. But what's the change which happened in between? Almost nothing. So, <clears throat> I think, uh, as we mentioned before, we will make only a short discussion round. You see, people are already leaving to the get together because I think there is a better drink than here. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, but I think uh, it was still interesting to talk to you, and the audience can talk to all of you later on.
So I think we will close around and everybody can give his last statement if you like. Okay, I think we have to start to building the trust in, in IT systems on a very low level. Even hardware is compromised and, and supply chains and, and boxes were opened and then some yeah, uh, things were put into, into uh, IT hardware and so. Um, we have to start very on the beginning. We have to start to build better software. We have to make code reviews. We, have, we can automize uh, looking into source code by, with scanners and, and taking a burden away from, from looking at code quality and so on. There, there are also tools that uh, help us that, that make it easier to, to produce better code. So this is the first thing. To, to improve quality on these things, on, on products, and on, on and this only uh, can work with op uh, with open source and with free software. Where everyone one can also fix these things. So we should not work against each other. Everyone is producing his own software, but but have, having a community that can look into these things, and we have to teach the people to do this and work together in a community on building better and important good free software products that uh, will secure our future. Thank you. I think we must become more clear for the common people because we, we are few people know the problems, but the mass must know what the problem is. Okay. Yeah. Quite shortly, decriminalize you know, reverse engineering and the fact to uh, denounce some security gap uh, in uh, software product. And um, as well, like uh, to, to, I mean, neither not interfere with security product by putting back door in it each time we have something which can help company or people to have more security. There is a reaction of the authority on the market to just interfere with uh, those, uh, those products. There is a kind of nonsense, a schizophrenia in a, in, a, in a certain way. So, thank you very much. Thank you to the viewers at home. We will close this day. It's a pirate security conference, and now we will get to the get together. Hope we will all have a lot of interesting talks. So, thank you for this uh, end of this day.